So, we are discussing the notions of uh, dual bases, dual spaces, annihilators. Later, we will discuss the double dual, uh, the transpose of a linear transformation. Okay. Last time, uh, we had uh, proved the following result that uh, dimension of W plus uh, dimension W naught equals uh, n. We are assuming that uh, V is finite dimensional. Okay, v is finite dimensional and w is a subspace of uh, v then this holds where uh, w naught is the annihilator of w. So I am just recalling the definition w naught is the set of all uh, set of all functionals set of all linear functionals on v that take uh, each x in w to 0 this is w naught called the annihilator of uh, of w and uh, i was going to uh, state uh, two consequences the first one first one is the following let uh, v be finite dimensional and uh, w be a subspace of uh, v of dimension dimension k then w is the intersection of n minus k hyperspaces w is the intersection of n minus k hyperspaces of v what is a hyperspace of a vector space any subspace of dimension 1 less than the dimension of the space v that is called a hyperspace. So one of the consequences of uh, really not this result but the proof of this result okay. So let me only take the first few steps of uh, the proof of the previous theorem from that uh, we will derive uh, we will derive the fact that uh, this w is the intersection of n minus k hyperspaces okay. So recall the proof the first few lines of the proof of the previous theorem dimension w plus dimension w not equal to n let us say w is uh, w has this as a basis b equals u1 u2 etc uk this is a basis for w and what we did was to extend this to a basis for uh, v I uh, will call this bw bv bv is uh, u1 u2 etc uk uk plus 1 etc un the dimension of v is taken to be n this is a basis for v and then what we did was to construct the dual basis for this let uh, b star equal f1 f2 etc fn b the dual basis of bv then uh, how are these uh, functionals and these vectors related by definition we must have f i of u j equals uh, delta i j okay in this notation I will uh, make the following claim. So let us look at uh, the following the claim that uh, I am making here is that this subspace w is the set of all uh, x and v such that uh, f i of x equal to 0 for all uh, i k plus 1 less than or equal to i less than or equal to n.
remember this W is a subspace of uh, V of uh, dimension k. I am trying to describe this W in terms of the linear functionals f k plus 1, f k plus 2 etcetera f n okay. Suppose let us say I have proved this claim then can you see that this is okay what is this again uh, this is the set of all x such that f k plus 1 x equal to 0, f k plus 2 x equal to 0 etcetera f n plus 1 sorry f n x equal to 0. This is a set of all x that lie in the intersection null space of f k plus 1, null space of f k plus 2 etcetera null space of f n that is if I had proved this then it would follow that w is intersection null space f i i equals k plus 1 to n intersection of null spaces of linear functionals each, li each linear functional has a property that the null space is one dimensional okay. Null space is n minus one dimensional. Range is one dimensional. Null space is n minus one dimensional. So each linear functional has a property that the null space is a hyperspace. I have written this as a intersection. Actually, n minus k sub k plus one to n. N minus intersection of n minus k hyperspaces. Okay. So we need to only prove this. Is that clear? Suppose we prove this, then it follows that uh, W is an intersection of n minus k hyperspaces. It is clear that it is intersection of n minus k subspaces, but each subspace is a null space of a linear functional, each is a subspace of a null space, uh, each subspace is a null space of a non zero linear functional. Null space of a non zero linear functional is n minus 1 dimensional, and so it follows that uh, this W is an intersection of n minus k hyperspaces. So we need to only demonstrate this, okay. So let us prove this. One way is obvious, but I will prove both. Uh, I have two sets A equals B I must show A contained in B and B contained in A okay let us start with uh, so we need to prove this claim now. So let me take X in W I must show that uh, this X has the property that whenever I is greater than or equal to K plus 1 FI of X is 0 let X element of W then uh, for W I have taken this as uh, a basis. So this x can be written as alpha 1 u1 plus alpha 2 u2 etc plus alpha k uk. <coughs> look at uh, look at i greater than or equal to k plus 1 and then fi of x i greater than or equal to k plus 1 fi of x remember I need to show that fi of x is whenever I want to show left hand side containing right hand side. I must show that if x belongs to W then uh, f k plus 1 x is 0, f k plus 2 x is 0 etc. f n of x is 0. So I take i to be greater than or equal to k plus 1 I must show this is 0 okay but f i of x f is f i is linear. So this is uh, alpha 1 f i of u1 etc. plus alpha k f i of u k. I have just used linearity of f i okay. But remember that this is a f1, f2, etc. Fn is a dual basis, and so whenever i is greater than or equal to k plus one, each of this is zero because look at these indices. You get from u1, etc. up to uk. So when i is equal to k plus one or more, i is not equal to j. So each term is zero. So this is zero. i is greater than or equal to k plus one. So fi for uh, any uj when j is less than or equal to k is 0 that is the definition. So fi of x is 0. So what we have shown is that the left hand side w is contained in this subset. So w is contained in uh, set of all uh, x and v such that uh, fi of x equal to 0 for all i satisfying uh, this. We need to show the converse conversely suppose uh, that uh, fi of uh, x is equal to 0 for uh, all uh, i, i running from k plus 1 to n. Suppose x is a vector that belongs to the right hand side subset 
right hand side subspace I must show that left belongs x belongs to the left hand side w now x uh, is an arbitrary element uh, so I can write x uh, using uh, this basis so I uh, let me use uh, some some other scalars x is a linear combination of u1 etc u n so x is beta 1 u1 plus beta 2 u2 etc plus uh, beta k u k plus beta k plus 1 u k plus 1 etc beta n u n <coughs> u1 u2 etc u n is a basis for v and so I can write x uh, in this manner f i of x is 0 so I start with 0 that is f i of x f i of x f i is linear beta 1 f i of u 1 etc plus beta k f i of u k plus etc ok let me write the next term also beta k plus 1 f i of u k plus 1 plus etc plus beta n f i of u n after applying i f i after applying f i I get this <coughs> for each i running from k plus 1 to n x must satisfy f i of x is equal to 0 but uh, look at what you have on the right hand side on the right hand side there is only one term that remains because f i of uh, u j is delta i j what is that term uh, see i runs from k plus 1 to n i is fixed okay and so this is uh, f i of u i all other terms are 0 all other terms are 0 beta i f i u i but f i u i is 1 so this is beta i so what have we shown we have shown that uh, if f i x is equal to 0 then beta i is equal to 0 but uh, what are the values that I can take I takes I runs from k plus 1 to n which means beta k plus 1 0 beta k plus 2 is 0 etc so what we have shown is that beta k plus 1 equals beta k plus 2 etc equals beta n equal to 0 so go back and look at the representation for x look at the representation for x x is beta 1 u 1 etc from k plus 1 the term onwards they are all 0 so x is just this this term is 0 the representation of x the scalars corresponding to bk plus 1 etc they are all 0 that is what we have shown because see this f i x is equal to 0 for all i running from k plus 1 to n so these scalars beta i running from k plus 1 to n are 0 so x is uh, a linear combination of u1 etc uk but then that is uh, u1 u2 etc uk is a basis for uh, w so this x must belong to w so I have started with uh, an arbitrary vector on the right hand side subset I have shown that that belongs to w so right hand side subspace is contained in the left hand side subspace so w is equal to this and uh, hence uh, the theorem corollary let me just write one more step to make uh, the final part uh, transparent let me write that uh, here so what uh, we have done is w is the set of all x and v such that uh, fi of uh, x is 0 for uh, all i running from k plus 1 to n now you see that this is the intersection of the null space of fi i running from k plus 1 to n anything on the right hand side must uh, be in the null space of f i for each i running from k plus 1 to n so this is and there are n minus k uh, this intersection has n minus k terms so there are n minus k subspaces each is a null space of a non zero linear functional so each subspace is of dimension uh, n minus 1 null space of f i that is n minus 1 so I have written w as intersection of n minus k hyperspaces okay that is the complete uh, proof of this corollary there is another corollary which uh, 
talks about the relationship of two subspaces and their annihilators really. So second corollary V is finite dimensional and W1, W2 are subspaces of V. Then W1 is equal to W2 if and only if their annihilators are equal. W1 0 is W2 0. Two subspaces are equal if and only if their annihilators coincide. This again uses the uh, proof of the previous theorem. Out of which one part is easy. <coughs> if S is equal to T, then uh, annihilator of S is equal to annihilator of T. That's easy to see. So W1 equals W2 implies W10 equals W20. Annihilators must be the same. Okay, it's a converse. That's uh, non-trivial here. To prove the converse, to prove the converse, what we will do is uh, assume that W1 is not equal to W2, so that W1 not is not equal to W2 not. Conversely, let us suppose that uh, W1 is not equal to W2. We will show that. Uh, we show that uh, W1 0 is not equal to W2 0. This is really the converse because what is the meaning of this? W1 not equal to W2 implies W1 uh, 0 is not equal to W2 0. This is the same as saying W1 0 equals W2 0 implies W1 equals W2. That is a converse. If A implies B, then not B implies not A. That is what we are using. The statement A implies statement B. The negation of statement B implies negation of statement A. So if we demonstrate W1 not equal to W2 implies this, then it follows that if this statement is not true, then negation of this statement is true. So it follows that if this is not true, that is W1 0 is equal to W2 0 implies W1 is equal to W2, which is really the converse. Okay. So let us prove this. Now W1 is not equal to W2, they are subspaces. So uh, as sets uh, they are not equal, so one is not contained in the, at least one of them is not contained in the other. For the sake of uh, using this notation, let me, uh, let me, uh, let me assume that uh, W2 is not contained in W1, okay. I am saying without loss of generality. So this is what I am going to prove. I am going to prove that W1 not equal to W2 implies W1 0 is not equal to W2 0. Without loss of generality, let us assume that W2 is not contained in W1. Okay. We show that W10 is not contained in W20. Okay. If W1 were not contained in W2, one could show that W20 is not contained in W10 by a similar argument. So there is no loss of generality in assuming W2 is not contained in W1. Now I will have to go back to the previous notation. For W1, let me take u1, u2, etc., uk as a basis. I am calling, I am calling that bw1. This is a basis for w1. This can be extended to a basis for v.
okay as before I am assuming that V is uh, n dimensional. So, there are n vectors here this basis has been extended to a basis for V. If W2 is not contained in W1 what it means is, is that there is a vector in W2 which is not in W1 okay is it clear then that there exists uh, S greater than or equal to K plus 1 such that US belongs to W2 obviously US does not belong to W1 do I agree with this. W2 is not contained in W1, W1 has U1, U2 etc., UK as a basis. So, anything in W1 is spanned by these vectors. Now, you take uh, US where S is not 1 to K, so S is greater than or equal to K plus 1. If all of these vectors belong to W1, then W1 is the whole of V, in which case this cannot uh, happen, W2 is a subspace. So, there is at least one uh, S for which U S does not belong to W 1, but those U I's that belong to W 1 are indexed by 1 to K. So, if there exists a U S that does not belong to W 1, it must be corresponding to an index that is greater than or equal to K plus 1. So, there exists U S where S is there exists S greater than or equal to K plus 1 such that U S does not sorry U S does not obviously belong to W 1, but it belongs to W 2 okay. Now, look at the functional F S that will do what uh, we require here look at the functional f s I have now constructed a dual basis let uh, b star equals f 1 f 2 etcetera <coughs> be the dual basis. corresponding to the dual base uh, corresponding to the dual basis uh, bv corresponding to bv and then uh, as before fi of uj equals delta ij i am just calling your attention to fs look at fs fs of us we know by definition must be equal to 1 okay and that's not zero it means f s cannot belong to see u s belongs to w 2 and f s is a functional uh, that takes uh, u s to a non zero value. So, f s cannot belong to w 2 0 f s does not belong to w 2 0 w 2 0 is a set of all functionals that take all elements in w 2 to 0 I have produced one element in w 2. which is taken to a non zero value by the functional f s. So, f s does not belong to w 2 0, but obviously f s belongs to w 1 why, but f s of u i I will use j f s of u j equal to 0 for all the j such that 1 less than or equal to j less than or equal to k by the definition of the dual basis because j runs from 1 to k s is greater than or equal to k plus 1. So, j can never be equal to s j runs from 1 to k s is greater than or equal to k plus 1. So, s is never equal to j. So, this is 0 in other words f s of u 1 f s of u 2 etcetera they are all 0 which means uh, f s belongs to w 1 0 because anything in w 1 0 is a linear combination of these. And so, if you apply the linear functional uh, f s to that vector that will take the value 0 should I elaborate ok let me do that quickly. Uh, so, if uh, x belongs to w then uh, x is some linear combination of uh, these uh, u case uh, so that uh, f s of x is what I want f s of x is delta 1 f s of u 1 etcetera delta k f s of u k each term is 0. So, this is 0 that is f s belongs to w 1 0 
So remember I, uh, that's what I wanted to show. If W2 is not contained in W, I wanted to show W10 not contained in W20. I have a functional that belongs to W10. I have a vector or a functional that belongs to W10 but that is not in W20. Fs is not in W20. And so this holds and so the converse holds okay. So W10 equals W20 implies uh, W1 must be equal to W2. If the annihilators uh, coincide then the corresponding subspaces only for subspaces the subspaces must coincide. By the way this uh, formula does not hold if uh, you take arbitrary subsets. If W1 is a subset W2 is a subspace then W10 could be equal to W20 without W1 being equal to W2. The underlying uh, subsets must be subspaces okay. Okay to consolidate let us work out uh, two examples to consolidate the ideas of a dual basis uh, annihilators and then uh, determining uh, elements in a dual basis. So let us consider the following examples let us say I have uh, first one uh, determine the subspace W of uh, let us say I take uh, R4 determine the subspace W of R4 for which uh, the functionals given below are the annihilators. Okay. I am given uh, let us say 3 annihilators I will call f1 of x, x is in R4 so let us say I have uh, x1 plus x2 minus x3 plus x4 f2 of x is uh, x1 minus 2 x2 f3 of x is 3 x2 plus uh, 2 x4. The question is you are given functionals these functionals annihilate uh, a certain subspace what is that subspace. Remember a subspace just now we have seen W is equal to set of all x element of E such that fi x equal to 0 for all i running from k plus 1 to n subspaces can be given by uh, the set of annihilators of that subspace okay a subspace can be given using the annihilating fun uh, functionals also okay. So we need to solve this problem uh, so what is the definition of W? W is a set of all x in R4 in this case such that uh, f1 of x equals f2 of x equals f3 of x equals 0. Now what you will see is that again uh, it is uh, elementary row operations J write down these 3 equations these are homogeneous equations. Uh, these three systems give me the following sorry there is only one system x1 plus uh, x2 minus x3 plus x4 equals 0 x1 minus 2x2 equals 0 3x2 plus 2x4 equals 0. elementary row operations right so I have the matrix uh, 1 1 minus 1 1 1 minus 2 0 3 0 2 x2 x3 x4 
I will apply elementary row operations to determine the set of all solutions. keep this as a pivot and then straight away make this 0 okay let me do it uh, like this I have uh, 0 1 minus uh, 1 by 3 1 by 3 I can divide this also by 1 0 1 0 divide by 3 2 by 3 keeping the second text the operation will be to okay multiply this by 3 so that was unnecessary okay so i have 0 0 1 1 0 1 minus 1 by 3 1 by 3 1 0 minus 2 by 3 2 by 3 yeah obviously i'm not doing it very efficiently but let's look at the solution So now I have uh, a 3 by 4 system where this 3 by 3 part is the identity part so what follows is that uh, remember that uh, this uh, came from this set there are 4 variables what uh, this tells me is that I must fix the last variable x4 so let us say x4 is uh, alpha then uh, x1 is uh, minus uh, 4 by 3 alpha x2 is also minus 4 by 3 alpha x3 is alpha minus alpha there is a problem with the solution from this step to this step it is correct from here to here see uh, I am keeping this as um, the pivot row then uh, 1 by 3 times this plus this so these uh, entries this becomes 0 1 by 3 times this plus this 2 by 3 of this is 2 let me look at once again uh, up to this step is correct okay so I am keeping this as fixed okay then uh, multiply this by 2 by 3 to cancel this 1 0 2 by 3 2 by 3 plus 2 by 3 4 by 3 that is okay no? so this entry is minus 2 by 3 alpha please check the calculations so what is w then w is one dimensional w is one dimensional because it is any multiple of uh, let me just say w is span of uh, this vector let me multiply throughout by 3 x1 is minus 4 
x2 is minus 2 so let us say 4 2 x3 is multiplying throughout by 3 and uh, minus 1 I am multiplying by 3. I am multiplying by minus 3. Minus 3. Okay. 6 minus 3 minus 3 x1 minus 2 x2 3 x2 that is 6 minus 6 is 0. So this is the subspace w which is annihilated by these 3 <coughs> functionals okay again it is only solving homogeneous systems. One more problem where we will determine the annihilator second example find w0 find w0 if w is spanned by these vectors let us say u1 is Let me take one more. W is a subspace spanned by these four vectors. I am not claiming that uh, these vectors form a basis for W. W spanned by this uh, set of vectors. What is uh, w0 the annihilator of w okay remember that w is a subspace of r5 not the whole of r5 there are only four vectors here so w is a subspace of r5 i must find the functionals that generate w0 okay so i'll determine a dual basis for a basis corresponding to for a basis containing uh, for a basis contained in this uh, set these four may not be independent okay so let us uh, what do we need to find we need to find w0 okay so let us look at the functional f uh, if f belongs to w0 what is the condition that f must satisfy okay but before that let us look at these uh, four. I uh, will again write it in the matrix form 1 1 minus 1 minus 1 1 1 1 minus 1 minus 1 minus 1 1 1 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 2 and uh, apply elementary row operations uh, w is the subspace which is the row space of this matrix w is the subspace corresponding to the row space of this matrix okay row space does not change if we do elementary row operations so i want to do just probably one more one operation i not reduce it to the row row decalon form i'll just do one of these so minus this plus this i'll keep this one also as it is and then observe the last one is 0, 0, 0, 0, 2. In the next step, uh, what uh, could be done is uh, this 2 could be made 0. So I will make that here itself. This could be 
this could be made plus 2 does not make a difference. So this uh, so what is clear is that the 4 vectors are not independent only 3 of them are independent dimension of w is 3 dimension of w is 3 we need to determine w0 okay what we know is that uh, any functional f in uh, r phi any functional on r phi if f belongs to r phi star then uh, f can be written as alpha 1 x1 plus alpha 2 x2 alpha phi x5 any functional on rn can be written as a1 x1 plus etc a n x n so fx is of this form I need to determine okay I do not know how many are there so I just keep uh, I need to determine f such that uh, f of uh, these two vectors I will call them v1, v2, v3 okay these row vectors v1, v2, v3 I must determine all f that satisfy uh, these three equations again uh, homogeneous equations okay so let us write uh, this it is almost in a row radius echelon form so I want 1 1 minus 1 minus 1 1 into uh, x1 x2 x3 x4 x5 equal to 0 I will have to interchange okay let us say I uh, make uh, I keep this as it is so from here I get uh, have to really do it but I get a 1 here this is not the row radius echelon form uh, so let me not uh, get into the details there from this I can right away uh, tell you what these functions are see from this uh, what follows is that uh, uh, remember I need to determine f so I need to determine the phi unknowns here alpha 1 alpha 2 etc alpha phi is that clear I need to determine w0 f belongs to w0 if f satisfies these equations these equations give me this into alpha 1 alpha 2 etc alpha 5 that is equal to 0 now what is clear is that uh, uh, from this alpha 5 is 0 is that okay alpha 5 is 0 okay let me write down second equation tells me alpha phi is 0 third equation uh, okay so from this uh, I have three equations in uh, five unknowns so I need to fix two of them which one do I fix uh, it cannot be the third one it cannot be the first one and so it is uh, it is the second and the fourth it is a second and the fourth which you get by uh, the row radius echelon matrix so let me say I fix alpha 2 equals uh, alpha see this uh, diagonal entry this is uh, this is 1 2 this is 3 so these 3 these 2 will not be fixed alpha 5 is already 0 1 and 3 so 2 and 4 alpha 4 is beta then determine the others in particular uh, the third equation gives me alpha 3 alpha 3 is uh, alpha 5 minus alpha 4 minus beta the 
the first one should give me alpha 1. this is gone alpha 4 plus uh, alpha 3 beta plus alpha minus sorry alpha 5 is 0 alpha 4 plus alpha 3 that is 0 so alpha 1 plus alpha 2 is 0 so alpha 1 is minus alpha okay So uh, can you see that the basis consists of uh, just two functionals because uh, there are just two variables alpha beta all the others are in terms of these let me summarize f belongs to w0 implies f is of the form okay, this is what I have minus alpha x1 alpha 2 is alpha plus alpha x2 alpha 3 is minus beta alpha 4 is beta alpha 5 is 0 alpha 5 does not figure here now I can write alpha and beta are can take arbitrary values in particular alpha 0 beta 1 alpha 1 beta 0 so I can write this as uh, alpha times x2 minus x1 plus beta times x4 minus x3 which means I can write this as alpha times f1 of x plus beta times f2 of x f1 and f2 are uh, independent functionals f1 of x is uh, x2 let us say minus x1 plus x2 f2 of x is a second uh, term x4 minus x5. sorry x4 minus x3 f1 is this f2 is this any f and w0 is a linear combination of these two these two are independent these two are independent because you can think of f1 as uh, the vector minus 1 0 uh, sorry minus 1 1 all other entries 0 f2 is 0 0 minus 1 1 0 so these two are independent okay okay finally w0 is span of f1 f2 so please verify the calculations essentially it is solving homogeneous equations even uh, remember the first problem when we determine the dual basis that was solving uh, homogeneous equations okay let me stop here next time uh, let us discuss the notions of uh, the double dual once we have done uh, once we go from v to v star can we go from v star to v double star so it, this can be done and uh, when we discuss the notion of double dual we will also consider the following question which we have not uh, dealt with before uh, what we know is that given a basis for v finite dimensional case given a basis for v there is a dual basis for v so there is a basis for v star where there is a natural correspondence between the basis for v that we started with and the basis for v star that we constructed the other question is given a basis for v star is there a basis for v such that the basis for v star is the dual for the basis of v that we would construct the answer is yes for finite dimensional spaces the answer is yes for infinite dimensional spaces the answer is no infinite dimensional spaces will be discussed in functional analysis for finite dimensional spaces we will show that the answer is yes okay this is one of the main results that uh, we will prove uh, in the next lecture okay let me stop.